is about 5.58 a.m. right now. We are walking. Can you see the moon? See that? There's the moon. That's crazy. Uh, I'm walking to the pool right now because we're starting the day off with a nice 1.2 mile swim. We're going to do some drill work. It'll be damn good. In the afternoon, we're going to go hit our hamstring focus leg day. I'm also going to throw in our quad focus leg day from Monday. And the reason why I had to do them so close is because I'm headed back to Connecticut uh, tomorrow, Thursday. Uh, for Easter, so I'm gonna get some running content while at home. And then finally, our bike came in. So I'll show you the bike, I'll show you her. Uh, we'll set her up with a trainer and we'll get our first official bike workout in which I'm stoked for. And then additionally, the reason for the time jumps throughout, you know, I guess this portion of the video, uh, two classes today, a few clients, gotta run some errands, but I'll just kinda like map you guys through like which sessions are where, and then at the end of the video, I'll throw in that leg day. But yeah, for right now, a little bit more of a walk to the pool and uh then we'll get started storage ran out towards the end there but i think i got a decent amount of clips the entire navy rotc was there so that was fun um but i'm headed home now so see you guys there let's talk about that workout real quick so as you saw when i got there i don't know if you could like fully see in the frame but the entire navy rotc was there so in like the dive pool which is only like 25 yards long i think there was like 40 people in total across like four lanes and then like a little open swim section. So me and shout out the, uh, the guy I was swimming with, homie, right away. He was like, hop on in, man, come on. Um, great guy. But I'm gonna throw up kind of like right there. Uh, 2,150 yards is just been like the baseline uh, mileage, 1.2 miles. Um, I've been swimming because that's the half Ironman distance. So like I'm officially starting Ironman prep in two weeks. I'm doing a little bit of traveling, so that's why I can't start it yet. But yeah, 2,150 yards. 35 minutes was the total time, 138 um, minutes per yards. That was the pace. So essentially what the workout was, was it was like a ladder. So I started out 25 yards, 10 second rest, 50 yards, 10 second rest, 100 yards, 10 second rest, 200 yards, 10 second rest, 400 yards, 10 second rest, and then 500 was the top ladder, 10 second rest, and then went back down the ladder. And then I think I did like a 50 yard warm up, 50 yard cool down in total. Overall, the swimming has felt like super good for me. Like I've just felt like I've gotten into like a pretty good rhythm with it, which I'm excited about because I've been swimming like a speedo, but like a breaker, like not like an actual speedo that swimmers wear. And then like today I was wearing like Gymshark compression shorts. So I feel like, like once I get on like, or once I put on like the wetsuit, like I'm gonna rip and I cannot wait. I think I'm gonna be doing some open water swims probably later on in this prep, I mean, for sure later on in this prep. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. Right now though, it is 7.33. My first class got canceled at nine, which is sick, because that gives me more time to chill out. I didn't stretch or do uh, meditation, so I'm gonna do that beforehand. Let's get cooking, because I do have a phone call at eight, so I do want to get the meal in before that. Um, but we're gonna have a damn good day. <music> Alrighty, we are done with class for the day. Super chill, but I only ended up having one instead of three. Uh, it's nuts how your second semester of college suddenly disappears just like that. But right now, we are driving. We got about a little bit under a 40 minute drive to Walnut, California. We are headed to pick up our medal for completing the 50 mile ultra, which if you haven't seen that video, you absolutely should, because we just went into absolute David Goggins mode and mobbed on that, so that was pretty sweet. I think I'm gonna stop and get maybe a light lunch um, and use that as pre-workout. I already made my pre-workout and have all my stuff uh, with me here because I think I'm gonna go 
straight from wherever I am, Walnut, California, to then uh, the gym. We're gonna go to Barbell Brigade, and then, like I said, we have a hamstring focused leg day, so we're gonna be doing some deadlifts, and yeah, I think it's gonna be a damn good time. So I'm gonna probably drive for a little bit, groove, throw out some music. It's a beautiful day out. Life is beautiful, man. Um, and uh, I'll catch you guys once we have the medal. Wait for it. Wait for it. Yeah! Let's go. Now that we got the medal, it's time to go to the gym. So I talked about it earlier, but I'm doing a leg day today. It is hamstring focused, so I'm deadlifting. We are going for hypertrophy deadlifts, so we're working the six to eight rep range. I think this is like a big thing that a lot of people mess up when it comes to hybrid training, is that it is different than like power building or just bodybuilding training. And the fact that you aren't necessarily working till failure in every single thing you do. Now, I don't want that to get like kind of messed up, but like for example, with bodybuilding, everything is very hypertrophy focused and you're going in the, you know, six to eight, six to 12 rep range to failure on all your sets. Now, my approach, um, just talking about accessories right now, is it's all about progression. So for example, if I did three by 10 last week, then I wanna make sure that at least in one of those sets, I'm going up. So even if it's a three by 12, 10, 10, I'm good with that because it's just like, hey, you know, I went up at least two reps in at least one of my sets. This has been like the biggest reason and why I've enjoyed using the notebook to write down all my workouts is because I've been able to track exactly my progression over time by just going a little bit further than I did last week. And I also always do it in a controlled manner. Like we'll say I did a three by eight one week, you know, and the next week it's feeling good. And I'm like, oh, I could probably get 12 that first set. I'm probably not gonna do 12, I'm probably gonna do 10 and try and go three by 10 across the board because I would rather progress in every single set than just like go really hard in the first set and then die out and then not really get the full range of motion, the full work that I'm trying to do with the second and third set. So yes, while with my accessories I do hypertrophy, I don't necessarily work till failure. I'm working very hard, it's very close to failure. Um, but really, it's just all about tracking those linear reps. I'm going from six to eight to 10 to 12. Once I hit 12, I drop back down to six and I go up five to 10 pounds depending on what the accessory lift is. Now, when it comes to the compounds themselves, this is where it really starts to differ. And I talked about this, I wanna say two, maybe three videos ago, when I talked about uh, unit adulating training. So this is cycling between hypertrophy, power, strength, and endurance. Each one of those is working with a different percentile of your one rep max, as well as different reps and set ranges. Each one serves a different focus or function in what you're trying to develop, whether it be uh, producing max force, max strength, muscle hypertrophy, or muscular endurance. And I cycle through these. I don't just only do strength or only do hypertrophy, because I feel like that's what a lot of people with, like will do and then they're like oh like this is why I'm getting injured while running because like I'm just training like a bodybuilder while my training sessions are structured in a power building manner I, I think that kind of cycling between you know the power and the endurance and the hypertrophy and the strength with the compounds is what allows me to get like a real full holistic development um, of my muscle group that I'm trying to work with whatever the compound is. And that's why I think I'm able to like see such great benefit with my strength and why it doesn't inhibit me in my endurance. Obviously, I think a big part of this is do whatever works for you. But I do think that like not only working in that pure hypertrophy phase and cycling in strength and power and endurance is super beneficial um, for seeing gains in the gym as well as for it not affecting your endurance training in a negative way. It could actually help in a very positive way. For example, with the power training, which everyone like, likes to hate on because you're going light and they're like, what the hell, I'm not getting the work. That's really good fast switch muscle fiber stimulation, which is gonna help you with those quick bursts in your sprinting workouts, which then are gonna push your VO2 max, which guess what? You're gonna expand your lactic threshold. You're gonna become a better runner. So it all helps. It all helps in the end, I promise you. We're not just doing random bullshit and being like, yep, I hope this works. And then like I said, it is Wednesday, so I usually would do back and shoulders today but I'm traveling all day tomorrow and I want to get a deadlift session in uh, I also want to show some leg day stuff so I did do the quad focus leg day on Monday which I will cue a video for that now
now we are headed to the gym. And the reason why I can do these back to back is like I said, quad focus versus hamstring focus. I'm working from the antagonist muscles to the agonist muscles that I worked uh, on Monday. Basically like your hamstring is the antagonist to your uh, quad. That's like the same thing as like your tricep is the antagonist to your bicep. It's just basically like the opposite side. Um, so that's why this isn't like the greatest hindrance. It would be different if I'm once like I did bench press on Monday and then I'm benching again on Wednesday. You know, it's, it's, it's a little different. We are gonna get to the gym now. I gotta kind of focus on driving because I don't know where I am right now. And I'm kind of, whoa, uh, kind of just driving around. So I will catch up with you guys when we get to the gym. loud in there with the music but we have our workout set i think i'm just going to go through the workout show you guys through the video and then after we'll review the notebook and i'll kind of walk through the rep sets and everything with the mindset but let's deadlift a lot of weight today i think that would be fun So that lift ended up being pretty good. I'm not too upset about it, especially since we are four days post 50 mile run, so not too mad. I'm gonna throw it right there so you guys can see uh, what the notebook looks like. But obviously what we talked about, deadlifts, hypertrophy, uh, we wanted to target six to eight reps. Our top set ended up being 495 for six. I honestly could have gotten two more reps, but I just kind of wanted to be smart. I'm looking back at the video and I'm like, I should have gotten two more reps. It's all good. Then we get into our accessories, which is all hamstring focused. Barbell RDLs. Last we got 10, 10, and 8. This we got 10, 10, and 10. Lying leg curls. Last we got 12, 10, and 10. This we got 12, 12, and 12. Uh, single leg dumbbell RDLs. 8, 8, and 8. Last we got 6, 6, and 6. And then barbell calf raises. We got 2 by 10 at 245. First time doing that weight. So what I, what I want you to see is that could I have possibly gone to 12 reps in the first set of barbell RDLs, gone to 15 reps in the first set of lying leg curls, gone to 12 reps for single leg dumbbell, like, yeah, probably. But that would have fatigued me for the latter two sets and I probably wouldn't have passed the reps that I hit last week. And that's always the goal, is just every week do more reps than you hit the week before. So like, is this technically training till failure? Like, no and yes, because like you're pushing yourself, but at the same time, like you're leaving some reps in the tank so to make sure like all three sets are consistent. But yeah, that was our second leg day of the week. And now we're gonna ride the bike. Look at this thing. She's beautiful. So I'm gonna try and get this on the trainer and then set up Zwift right there. So literally the bike's gonna be 
just right here. So let's give it a go. be honest I don't even know if this is set up right um, I'm just gonna mess around on it for a little bit Full transparency, I severely underrated how just complex the whole bike thing is. Everyone's been saying I had to take it to a store and get it like personally sized to my body. So I think I'm gonna do that when I get back. But yeah, man, it's sick. This setup is sick. I just have to like get it down. Like I was trying to figure out how to change gears. I was trying to figure out seat height. I was trying to figure out like which brakes you what. It was there's a lot of moving parts, but. Honestly, this is going to be a lot of fun to ride, especially as we head into um, like this next month, whether it be a nice out, we'll do a ton of long beach rides. I don't know how I'm going to film that, but we're going to cross that bridge when we get there. But yeah, overall, um, this is the, uh, the setup that we're going to get very comfortable with eventually. It's just a process to like, set up, and now i got to take it all apart. Fuck, man, that's tough, but yeah. Um, I'm probably going to call it quits for the night because I do have a flight at 6 a.m. to get home. So I'm going to clean this up and uh, hit the hay and I'll catch you guys when I'm in Connecticut. And we're back in Connecticut. I've quickly realized that this video has turned more into just like a compilation of some training clips from the week. So and that's what it's gonna be, just a pseudo week of training. But back home in Connecticut, Thursday it was all day travel, Friday kinda just took it easy because my body was all out of whack from all the traveling. Today is Saturday, March 30th. I had a lift this morning with my cousin, we just did like chest and arms um, in his little like home basement and now we're gonna go for a 10 mile run. Let's get after it. First five miles, the legs felt pretty good. I took mile six to like see like, oh, do I still have it? Like, should I keep pushing speed? We still had it. So 10 miles, 7.13 pace, not too bad. And just like that, that is gonna bring us to the end of the video. Um, totally my bad, this is all over the place. This week has been kind of a lot. Um, I'm also just kind of trying to take in, this is probably gonna be my last time home for a little bit. Uh, more announcements to come about what that means a little bit later, huh? But yeah, we're about one week out from official start of Ironman training. Uh, we are going to be competing in Ironman 70.3 Muscleman in Geneva, New York, and that is July 14th. So got about 16, 15 weeks till then. So we're going to do some really solid training for that. And I am super excited for that. Um, but next week or next weekend, we are headed to Arizona for 
conference I am super blessed to be speaking at Brady Oaks, my uh, bodybuilding coach. His uh, company, Tua, is putting on a retreat, and I was blessed with the opportunity to speak about mental health uh, within young athletes at the retreat and be a guest speaker. So I am so excited, so grateful for that opportunity, and I cannot wait for it. But yeah, we got about a little bit over a month left of school left, then we graduate, and then it's when the real fun begins. So we're going to take it day by day, be as present as possible, enjoy everything that we can, but for now, that's going to go ahead and end this video. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you guys next time.